Hello and welcome to B Reviews. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Suicide Squad. Now I'm sure you've heard a lot of shit about Suicide Squad. A lot of people are upset about how it was done. A lot of people are saying that perhaps it's too long, poorly written, the characters are thin, the plot's contrived, all kinds of good stuff. So I just kind of wanted to cut through that a little bit uh, and give you my thoughts. So the basic premise is that this chick, Waller, is making a group of bad guys to work as good guys for the US government and accomplish like really difficult missions. All these villains are metahumans, so the idea is that they're more powerful and better or more creative whatever, than the regular soldier and they're able to do like these missions that are really difficult. She puts a bomb in each person's neck so that way if they do something bad she can just blow up the bomb and then poof, their head pops right off. One of these villains is called the Enchantress and she's super duper evil and basically she's able to immediately break out of her bonds uh, and start to destroy a city. She wakes up a whole bunch of bad guys. So as this enchantress is making like a doomsday weapon and she's woke up her like Inca brother to like guard her and help her with power, the Suicide Squad gets sent out on a mission to rescue a Mark. And eventually we find out that Mark is Waller and she's like, like 300 feet away from where the enchantress is making her weapon. But eventually the Enchantress, because she's really pissed off at this Waller chick, and this Waller chick like knows like all kinds of like military secrets, like where all the nukes are and stuff, the Enchantress like captures her and uses like mind tentacle probes and sucks her like codes and nuke information out of her head. Eventually they get Waller back, they kill the Enchantress, they kill the brother, they break up the doomsday weapon, and everybody's saved. It's at this point that all of them are sent back to jail, but they have 10 years removed off their sentences, which for most of them, they have like multiple life sentences. So they basically made virtually no progress. And that's really the movie in a shell. You can explain it very quickly. <sighs> now, what did I have a problem with in this movie? Well, there's a, there's a lot of really annoying, like obvious problems with this movie. The biggest one is the writing sucks. And this is this seems to be a universal thing with movies that are shitty. And I watch a lot of shitty movies, trust me. Zombies, Ant Boy, Super Fast, Food Boy. The intro of this movie has the Waller chick flipping through like a dossier of all of our villains. So she's like, Harley Quinn, she's a badass. And then it shows Harley Quinn like dicking around for like two or three minutes. And then she's like, she's like Deadshot, and then it shows Deadshot dicking around for a couple minutes, and it's just like this is so artificial and needless. We don't need to watch every goddamn person's introductory. Just say Deadshot, he's a great shot, and then one second of him going Pew, and hits a target, boom, we know he's Deadshot, and then show Harley Quinn just be like, she's a sweet as sugar badass, and then show her like with her baseball bat. I don't get why they don't use her hammer. Like I think she has a hammer, but whatever. They could have done this, but instead we have like 15 or 20 minutes of padding where it explains each of these villains kind of intro in a little like short montage-y kind of thing. And I'm like, that's got to be against a movie like law. Like a Hollywood bylaw is like no montages if possible, like minimal montages. And then you have Waller and she's like, the Entrantress is super powerful. I shouldn't be able to control her, but I have her heart in a suitcase, and then when she get, pisses me off, I stab her heart a bunch, and that hurts her a bunch. Are you kidding? She's like a, the Enchantress is kind of like almost god level omnipotence. She can like teleport, she can like transform people in, into monsters like really, really fast, and she's like super powerful. So this Waller's chick is really, really stupid. You should have just locked the Enchantress up, don't let her out ever even better just kill her because she's so fucking dangerous and this you know waller is so arrogant to think oh yeah i can control a god that's fucking stupid dude and then she pays for it the whole movie this whole movie is basically waller's an arrogant bitch flag is like the leader of the suicide squad he's like the military guy who is human and he keeps everybody in line for waller well fucking flag is whipped like shit he's like he's like like, you can see it kind of the whole movie. He's like, my girlfriend is the Enchantress and she's a bitch. I, I wish my girlfriend wasn't the Enchantress and all this kind of shit. And he, I'm just like, oh my God, dude, you're a military guy. He's supposed to be the best guy in the world. He's like the best spec ops guy. He's as sharp as attack. And then he's like, my girlfriend, she's the, 
Enchantress, and I'm so sad, and we gotta save her. And I'm just like, oh my god, dude, suck it up, dude. When the Enchantress breaks out, why the hell didn't she just kill everyone immediately? She knows where the prison facility is. She can teleport across the world at will. Yet she's like, you know what? I think I'm gonna sit around making a doomsday weapon and just kind of like sit in one place and do nothing and just kind of sit around and do nothing and like make cars go in the sky and stuff. That sounds great. I'm gonna let everyone have maximum chances to kill my ass. You're just like, Oh my Jesus, this is so stupid. And she's like a god level intellect or whatever, right? She's really smart. She's like a sorceress, enchantress, god level, super magics. And she's retarded. I'm like, woman, just kill everybody. Just teleport and go, pfft, boom, that's done. Pfft. Oh, that guy's dead too. Now I have no opposition. Was she just doing it for the lols? She's like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to let everybody have a good chance because, you know, What's the point of being a god if you don't have to get run out the farm every once in a while, you know? When Flag and the Suicide Squad are like sent out to save their mark, which they don't know is Waller, and to like stop like a terrorist action, because like, there's a terrorist action, you guys need to save it. Do none of them like have a, like, a device to watch shows? Do they not have a cell phone? Do they not have like the ability to turn on a TV? Because like the news, someone, is going to record the fact that people are turning into eye beasts, that the Enchantress is, is destroying Manhattan or wherever the city is, That's, that all this is happening. Is there no amateur video? No blogger is like, oh man, I want some hits, <sniffs> takes a picture of all this shit happening, and then they're like so surprised. They're like, you mean the Enchantress got out? Really? The Enchantress got out? How did that even happen? How do, I didn't even know that. And they like, are so confused, and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? Turn on, turn on, turn on a tube TV, put it on CNN, something. Okay, so they have bombs in their neck, and that makes it so their heads will blow up when they're doing bad stuff. So, you know, somebody runs away, the little Slipknot, one of the guys, one of the bad guys that's on the Suicide Squad is called Slipknot. Yeah. So Captain Boomerang is like, hey, I Slipknot, you think it's a good idea? I think we should run away because I think these bombs in our neck are totally false. You should just go kick it out, man. And then Slipknot's like, oh, yes, I will definitely run for the skies with my shitty ability to go up walls. So Slipknot's ability is, he basically shoots like a hook dart. He's like, Pff. he's like, Pff. And he climbs them kind of slowly. He gets like 30 feet away up a wall, and then he gets killed. Like in the, the, the flag guy's like, boop, you're dead. And the guy goes, Pow, and his head blows up. And everyone's like, well, that's, they're legit about the bombs in our neck. And I'm just like, this guy is so stupid. He didn't even, he can't even move away very quickly. You know, he's like, he's like, and then he slowly climbs up his little, little shooter thing. Holy Christ. And then you have Katana, which is just like anime chick with sword. And again, zero, zero addition to the plot. She is, she's just there to reinforce the fact that, that, that she's on Flag's side. She's not a villain. She's a good guy. And she just like volunteered to watch the Suicide Squad, which seems really counterintuitive for her character. Look, if I was Katana and I wanted to, and my husband was trapped in a sword and his soul, and I stole the souls of bad guys and they go into my sword and stuff, I would be killing villains. I wouldn't be babysitting. She's like, well, you know, I can't really cut it as a hero, so I guess I'm just gonna be like a prison guard. That's like somebody being like, you know, I can't cut it as a cop, I guess I'll be a security guard. Why, why do we want to watch that person in our movie? We wanna see bigger than life characters. And the movie's like, no, no, you're going to see, like, the, the B, C. You're going to see the Z team of heroes. You know what our movie needs? More shitty heroes. Yeah. We could put, like, Katana. She has, like, no powers whatsoever other than a sword that's, like, kind of fancy. I knew you'd see it my way. 
So Katana's only reason for being in this movie is the fact that she backs up the fact that Flag could press the button to blow up people's heads. And they're like, well, Katana will guard my back. That way I can press buttons on my phone. And I'm just like, that is so lazy. So eventually Joker is able to disable Harlequin's bomb by going to the factory where they program slash make the bombs and then getting a scientist to like deactivate it. He's like, de deactivate Harley's bomb. So when, when Flag presses the button, it doesn't kill Harley. And I was like, Joker would disable everyone's bomb. Joker would disable all the people's bomb and say, go fucking crazy guys. Cause Joker is chaos incarnate. There's no order, order to Joker. He is, he is chaos. You have Batman and he's like neutral good. He's like uses the law when it's necessary, but he is good. He always is doing it to goodify stuff. And then you have the Joker and then you have the Joker and the Joker is about chaos. He's evil chaotic. He, other than killing Harlequin, he'll beat the fuck out of Harlequin. He'll torture Harlequin, sure. But, you know, he's like, let it go, man. He's like, everyone can get killed. I don't care if the world is anarchy. That is my perfection, right? But he's like, oh no, just disable Harlequin's bomb. All the other villains that would raise Cain and create chaos, we won't disable their bombs. We'll just, you know, let them be tools for the good government. There's no fucking way that would happen. So eventually they're fighting the Enchantress's minions. <sighs> this was really disappointing. The Enchantress's minions are basically a suit covered in black eyes. If you think of Putty from like Power Rangers, covered with like little black marbles, you have those enemies, you have the enemies. And you're just like, really? That's what you could come up with. You have like the Enchantress, which is like an Aztec god person. You couldn't come up with like Aztec warriors with like feathers and cool makeup and like super jumping and uh, you're just like, okay, you got a suit covered in black marbles. Great fucking job, buddy. So after like one of the most uninspired fight scenes I've seen that goes on way too long. Eventually they get to Waller, they go up this building after fighting a ton of these fucking clay suit black marble guys, just like tons of them. They get to Waller and they're like, oh, Waller's here. And you realize that Waller is like 500 feet from where the Enchantress is creating her bomb. She's right there on the top floor of a building. And you're like, why doesn't the Enchantress just kill Waller? Why doesn't the Enchantress like use some iota of her power to figure out where Waller is and kill her ass? Oh, Jesus. So the vital transport helicopter that's coming, you know, it flies down to save Waller. So it was filled with like top tier military guys, like really great guys, but no one suspects that it gets hijacked. Waller doesn't say like uh, transport helicopter status and like there's no like message, there's no like code they could say like, yeah, we're coming in for a 34. 34 could mean we're hijacked. Nothing. They're, everyone is completely taken by surprise that these hardened military like mercenary slash government agent guys who are like badass to the max, that, they're, that they get taken over by the Joker and they follow his orders and he's willing to kill their like HVT, their high value target, which is Waller. These guys don't like give up their lives for this woman because she's the most important person ever. No, they're just like, yeah, you can hijack the copper. Yeah, we're not gonna say anything to Waller. Yeah, we're just gonna let our mission be crap. I'm just like, are you kidding me? This, this movie hates the military or the ability of soldiers. It's like soldiers suck all throughout this movie. So eventually Waller gets kidnapped and Flag is like, okay guys, mission over. Every Suicide Squad member, I broke my phone so you guys can just go. I won't kill you if you leave. Correctly, Captain Boomerang fucking books, which is fucking what I would do, what anyone would do. And then all the other villains are like, oh, well, Flag, you're such a good guy and we're not villains. Oh, wait. So I guess we'll stay around, you know, and we'll totally help you like get your girlfriend back and fight the Enchantress and put our lives on the line for nothing. Yeah, we'll do that. And I'm just like, are you kidding? These villains would just, they would be like, Phew. and this is a good time to bring up the point. Deadshot Will Smith, I'm sure, demanded that Deadshot be a big part of this movie. 
And he's such a big part that he crowds out all the other characters kind of like personas other than Harlequin. Robbie Margot, I think is her name, the lady who played Harlequin. She did a great job. Harlequin is really, really, really difficult to portray. So is Joker for that matter. And Jared Leto, people didn't like it, but he, Joker is insane. He's insane and he's chaos and that's hard to betray. Harlequin, that lady did a great job. Uh, kudos for that. Best part of the movie, easily. But Will Smith plays such a neutral-fied character. Deadshot is not a nice guy. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy who does bad things. He's a bad man who does bad things. And Will Smith is like, oh no, I don't want him to be too bad. I want him to be kind of a nice guy. And the problem with that is he's not. Deadshot's a terrible person. He kills people for money. That's his job. He has a soft spot for his daughter, sure. But that doesn't mean he has a soft spot for everyone, which is what this movie makes you feel like. Anyways, all of them are like, yeah, let's risk our lives. Let's eh, fuck it. Even though we're not going to get killed if we if we head out of here, we could totally just leave right now like Captain Boomerang. Let's, let's risk all of our lives. And it's just like, ugh, I, I know that it needs that to happen for the plot to continue, but it, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. Not like that. Okay, so eventually they get into the fight with the Enchantress and the croc jumps under the water. Uh, you know, the croc and the team, they're like, they're like, we need to put a bomb under the place where the brother is standing so that the bomb will blow up the brother and kill him. And I'm like, what? The croc, killer croc, has no reason to be in this movie. And they put him into all these scenes. They're like, yeah, he's fighting. He smacked a guy. And then you show the other character. You show Deadshot shooting like 50 guys. And the Croc's like, I punched one guy. Why are you even here, bro? Like, I'm fine with the killer Croc, but he, he was given no reason to be in this story. So eventually they're like, man, we got to find some stuff for killer Croc to do. This movie's, this movie's about to end. They give killer Croc a mission. They're like, Croc... You know, Croc's like, I can swim. I'll swim under and put the bomb. And then for whatever reason, a whole bunch of military guys go with him, even though Killer Croc could just do it. So Killer Croc swims under and puts a bomb under the ground. And at this point, we have the rest of the Suicide Squad fighting the brother. And in the coolest part in the movie, kudos, because it's the first time we get to see some really cool effects, like a really, like, wow, that's pretty cool. El Diablo, which is one of the Suicide Squad guys, he's a fire guy. He turns into fucking, like, the coolest, like, an Aztec skeleton that's, like, 10 feet tall, on fire. And he beats the living fuck out of this giant, like, Egyptian brother guy. So they're fighting, and El Diablo is like a fucking inferno. It's like the fucking coolest thing in the movie. And then he's fighting, he's hitting, he's flaming, and then eventually he pushes him over to the corner of this area that they're fighting in, and supposedly they know exactly where the bomb is, and the bomb is right below them, and then El Diablo guy is like, blow up the bomb, even though it'll kill him for whatever reason, and then they boop, and they blow up the bomb, and then and the best character effect in the movie ends, and you're like, Fuck! I wanted that character to live. He was the coolest effect. Oh, God. So with that, the brother is blown up. The El Diablo is blown up. And you're like, fuck. And now the Enchantress is weakened and she's pissed. And she starts fighting what's left of the Suicide Squad. It's like they're actively trying to make this movie suck. They're like, oh shit, oh shit, the fun meter's getting above like 1%. Let's crush it. Let's smack that fun meter right back down. Smack that fun... So they're fighting the Enchantress, and the Enchantress beats the living fuck out of the Suicide Squad. She's, she's basically a god-level metahuman or whatever, right? She's, like, amazing. And then she's like, if you join the dark side, I'll let you have all the shit you want. And Harley Quinn's like, okay, I'll join your dark side Enchantress. And Harley Quinn gets close and grabs, like, a knife thing and cuts the heart of the Enchantress. She sneak attacks the Enchantress. And the Enchantress is like, no, and cuts the Enchantress's heart, which is a power, right out of her chest. This proves one thing, and that sneak attacks are king. So the writers decide that Croc has to do at least one more thing in this movie to be useful. Deadshot's like, I can't throw this five pound bomb 20 feet, Croc. You need to do that. So then Croc's like, okay, I'll do it. 
Hmm. And Croc throws an explosive at the doomsday weapon that's just kind of sputtering in the back there. And then Deadshot's like, ah, took the sh And then he has to grab Harlequin's pistol. And I don't know why that is. And he shoots the explosive and it blows up and the doomsday weapon is destroyed and it's turned off. Just for the record, my grandma could throw that freaking explosive the 20 feet required. So Flag gets the heart and he's like, yeah, the Enchantress is really bad. And even though my girlfriend will probably die or will die, according to him right there, he crushes the heart with his hand and the Enchantress dies. Of course, like 10 seconds later, the girl that the Enchantress was embodying, who, you know, it, her Enchantress makeup falls off or whatever. And the girl's like, I'm still alive, Flag. And Flag's like, I can't believe it. I sacrificed nothing to win. And you're like... Well, that was a character development moment avoided. So everybody gets sent back to prison and they get 10 years removed from their sentences, which is useless. So they still will be in prison for forever. Joker frees Harlequin, which again, doesn't mean anything to us because we don't care about this movie and we don't care about any sequels. And then after all this, there's the Stinger, and the Stinger has Bruce Wayne talking with the Waller chick who survived. Don't tell me how. And Waller's like, Bruce, you've got to save me. You've got to cover up all this stuff. Even though I already covered it all up, you've got to cover up that the Enchantress happened and all this metahuman stuff, even though I don't need you to do that. And Bruce Wayne's like, Well, of course I'll cover all this stuff up. I'm Bruce Wayne. I'm richer than God but you're gonna have to give me all your metahuman files so I can totally make like a metahuman like scrapbook. Well, okay, Batman, I mean Bruce Wayne, you can have all the metahuman data, that's not suspicious at all. And why this is, is he wants to create the Justice League because, ugh. What's dumb is the fact that Bruce Wayne is really, 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 really rich and has contacts all around the world and is super great and all this kind of stuff and he's like, friend enemy friends with Superman and you know he would he would know where to find metahumans he could just like buy information about metahumans where they are and all this kind of shit he does not need to do a deal with Waller to get information that he could probably look up on Google well let's see here person that's super fast person that is a chick who can like jump and has a whip yeah there's about 10,000 million images of that on Google I wonder who they are. Like, at least in the Spider-Man universe, everyone knew that Spider-Man was around, and he was in the news, and he was well-publicized. Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Arrow, whatever. They all would have presences on social media and through news. There's no reason Bruce Wayne would have to do anything to get this information. Okay, well, that was Suicide Squad, guys. Uh, Suicide Squad is not good. It's a shitty movie. It's upsettingly shitty. And it's frustrating. It actively seeks to sabotage its own success. The plot is paper thin, and it's a basically a travel movie because you, they're traveling from one point to another and then that point changes. We've gotta go get Waller and then we gotta go get the Enchantress. The choreography is poor. The effects are generally poor. The enemies are poor. Everything in this movie is disappointing. And unless you got a serious, and I mean serious, hard on for superheroes, you're not going to like this movie. My rating for this movie is probably going to be around a 4 out of 10. I would not recommend seeing it. I would not pay for this movie. If you have Netflix, maybe when it comes out on Netflix in six months, it'll probably be out on Netflix pretty freaking quick because I don't know if they did well. I don't think they did well in the theater. I certainly didn't buy a full price ticket, I'll tell you that. Well, thank you for making it through another B Reviews with me and I'll be back with something else soon. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, and leave a comment in the spot below if you feel like it. But until then, oh Jesus. I think I'm going to need to take a break because this sucked. So take it easy, guys. Until next time, Mike B. signing out.